the Shadow Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Pat McFadden, joins us live this morning from Westminster. A very good morning to you. Right, tell, tell me more. <laughs> Bring me up to speed. Well, um, my party leader, Keir Starmer, is making an important speech this morning uh, where he says that economic growth has got to become Labour's obsession if it wins the next election. And he says that for a good reason, because in recent years we've had ta tax burden going up to its highest level for decades, but we've also got creaking public services and stagnating income. So when you put all that together, it's a bad bargain for the people of the country. And the only way to get a better bargain is to get better economic growth, because that's how you get incomes up and you generate the wealth for your public services. So that's at the heart of the speech that Keir Starmer is making this morning. He's got his inspiration for this from Margaret Thatcher, has he? <laughs> I think you're referring to the article yesterday where he praised uh, Tony Blair, Clement Attlee and Margaret Thatcher all as conviction politicians. It's not an endorsement of our policy, it is a recognition that these were three prime ministers who effected big change in the country. He's not the first Labour leader to do this. Uh, Gordon Brown had Mrs Thatcher to tea at number 10 when he was prime minister and also described her as a conviction politician who got things done. Tony Blair said she was a towering figure. It's a recognition of somebody who won three elections. Uh, but alongside that, he recognised Tony Blair and Clement Attlee as great Labour Prime Ministers who got things done too. And the point he's making is it's very easy when you're a political leader to get buffeted around by events, but if you want to make lasting change, you have to have a sense of mission, and that sense of mission is reflected in the speech that he's making this morning about better economic growth for the country, because we've got to get out of the pattern and the bad bargain that people have seen in recent years. Listen, you don't have to tell GB News viewers that Margaret Thatcher uh, was a, a great leader. Many people will agree, but what a lot of people will see and think when they hear that Sakir Starmer is talking about her in this way is somebody who's politically naive, alienating a wing of his own party that he didn't need to. He might be trying to steal some grabs from the right, but he could do it without personally na naming somebody that did so much damage in the views of the left of your party to the country. I know that momentum, for example, came out yesterday saying this was an insult and brought shame on the party. Yeah, and it, it, people said similar things when Gordon Brown had her in to tea and when Tony Blair said good things about her in the past. You always get a bit of a reaction like that. Um, but I think Keir is more focused on uh, broadening the Labour Party's appeal. And the, the blunt truth is there is no route to a Labour government after you've been beaten so badly in the last few elections other than by appealing people to people who have voted Conservative in recent years. And what he's saying is those people have been let down by the Conservatives precisely because we've had poor economic growth, we've got creaking public services, you've had so many tax rises with so little to show for it. And the only way to change that pattern, to change that bad bargain, is to have better economic growth, make sure it's felt in every part of the country, and that way you get people's incomes up and you generate the wealth for good public services. That's the big sense of mission and the change of direction that the country needs right now, and that's at the heart of his speech this morning. Um, we've been talking migration this morning. There's a new poll out saying two-thirds of voters think current migration, and we're talking legal and illegal, just too high at the moment. Lucy Fraser for the government this morning said, well, if you want to do something about that, if you're one of those 66% think it's too high, you've got to vote Conservative, because Labour hasn't got a plan. Well, uh, look at the record. Not the comments from Lucy Fraser. I mean, uh, migration has tripled under the government. Just look at the record. So I don't know why it would be uh, any different in the future from what they've done. I can only look at what they've actually uh, done. Um, look, I understand the concerns around this. And one thing we are saying is let's get rid of the uh, wage incentive for 
migrant uh, workers, where right now, under the Tories, it's legal to pay people 20% less than the going rate for the equivalent British worker. Let's change that and at least make it a level playing field for people who want to come into the country. And maybe instead of throwing more and more money after a failing Rwanda scheme, why not take that money and spend it on attacking the criminal gangs who are actually organising this illegal trade in people in the first place? There's two things that might make a difference, neither of which the Conservatives will do. Although the National Crime Agency have said that they couldn't do that without the likes of schemes like Rwanda, but that's a whole other debate. I just mm. want to talk about something else that Sakir Starmer was writing about in this sort of fascinating but unsurprising article in the Sunday Telegraph yesterday. He also accused the government of failing to take advantage of Brexit opportunities. And yet this is a leader who's also said that once he's in power, he'll be seeking closer alignment. No wonder people call him Sir Flip-Flop. very confusing message, isn't it? No, I look, it's a recognition that we're not going to rerun the Brexit argument. Whoever wins the next election, the duty for that leader of that government will be to make the best future that we can outside the EU. We're not going to rerun the argument. Um, I think we do need a, a good, adult, positive relationship with our near neighbours. If you look at Russia's invasion of Ukraine, I think it puts into stark relief some of the things that we've been fighting about in recent years. Um, but that future uh, will not be by rerunning the Brexit argument. It's a, a duty on any future Prime Minister to make the best future they can for the country after the decision that was made in the referendum a few years ago. Uh, look, Pat McFadden, good to talk to Thank you this morning. You. Just before I let you go, as a proud Scotsman, have you tried this Scottish cheese, which is in the papers this morning, called Minger? which is apparently very, very, very smelly, made by a, a Scottish company called uh, Stones, I think. Have you tried it? I'm afraid I haven't, but what a name. What a great name. <laughs> great name. Well, yeah, I'll try it. The last the year, you bet next time, apparently they're selling it in Asda's in Scotland at the moment. So next time you back up, make sure you get yourself All a right. block of that. <laughs> Pat McFadden, okay, good well, to see you. I'll keep an eye out for it. Thank I you. do. <laughs>